comic book gang, it's me again, Jancy, aka Year of the Collector, and I brought great news. House of Brainiac is here, and it is incredible. Easily made the top three most anticipated comics for April 10, at least on my list. Not only it exceeded my expectations, Action Comics number 1064 kicked off the House of Brainiac story while paying off a lot of things set up all throughout last year, year 2023, by Joshua Williamson. Let's go back to where it began. This is the rise of the House of Brainiac. With the dawn of DC, we had the relaunch of the Superman title back in February 2023 by Joshua Williamson and Jamal Campbell and Al bunch of other great creators superman is introduced among a bunch of things to super court yes lex luthor was now in prison and to prove he was a changed man he signed over lex court to superman that meant all of the resources databases and employees were now at superman's disposal to include ll01 a hologram AI with access to the information archives who just so happens to look exactly like Superman's father's hologram from the Fortress of Solitude. All funny jokes just to irritate the Man of Steel. At the end of the issue, there's a very vague and cryptic appearance by Brainiac alluding to the end of the world and that maybe the people of Earth will doubt Superman. We don't see or hear anything about Brainiac for months. But fast forward to August, we had the 2023 annual Superman issue by Williamson and a whole lot of other creators. Some bad guys were trying to extract Lobo's DNA and they wondered if all Sarnians were made the same way as Lobo. But Lobo told them there's no more Sarnians. Well, except for his daughter Crush, because his world is dead. Or is it? Brainia revealed he had a city of Sarnia in his collection and he will need their help to uncover and contain something. We don't know what it is. We're just going to call it something. Whatever that is, Brainia will not be alone anymore. Since Brainia is interested in Let's call it companionship. Two months later, in Superman 7, or the 850th legacy issue, Lena Luthor, the estranged daughter of Lex Luthor, returns to Metropolis. Keep her in mind because I'll bring her back later. But let's carry on for now. Brainiac is back with a classic bad guy monologue and this amazing two-page spread detailing his battles with the boy in blue throughout the years. Brainiac interest on Earth comes from the fact that there's something about this planet that continues to create powerful people. He needs to know why. To contrast, there's a planet called Brawl where humans also exist, but unlike Earth, this planet has one and only one type of metahumans with a specific ability, magnetism. To conquer Planet Brawl, Brainiac employs the Sarnians from his collection. They are led by this fellow right here called General Chacal or Chacao. You can help me out with the pronunciation of the name. If it was up to me, I would say Chacal, but let's continue. Lobo's people descended on Brawl and decimated the entire planet at Brainiac's command. Since he first appeared on the scene, this has been Brainiac's whole thing, collecting cities and worlds to acquire knowledge. But now, he's looking to use that knowledge to create life. Because you know, like he said before, he doesn't want to be alone anymore. Skip ahead to now, Action Comics 1064, part one of the House of Brainiac. Without going too deep into spoilers, let me just show you a couple of the things that are paid off from before. For example, where did the reign of Lobos 
came from. Well, originally I thought they were clones, but no, not clones. They are OG Sarnians from Brainiac's collection. The second thing that paid off, and this one was crazy for me, once the invasion started, it was all hands on deck at Supercourt. Lex Luthor was on work release from prison, and he just so happened to be at Supercourt as well. He tries to get Lena, his daughter, to get to safety when LL01 appears without being called for, and that's when it's revealed that Lex had nothing to do with LL01. It was never a part of the Supercore that Lex arranged for Superman. And that is because LL01 was set up by Brainiac. Back in February of this year in Superman number 11, Lena calls for LL01. He was curious to learn what he knows. And he explained that he had access to Luthor's database, including personal files. So, Lena proceeded to ask about herself. Like I said, she is estranged to her father. I personally didn't know this, but listen to the tea here, to the family tea. Lex Luthor traded his own daughter to Brainiac 13 in exchange for technology from the future. She ended up being forced to be an avatar for Brainiac at one point. That's some family drama right there. But all this information is pretty public. Lena was disappointed. There was no other notes or more personal information about her. But LL01 didn't have no access to Luthor's personal files because, you know, in this case, specifically about Lena, because it was Brainiac all along. Since last year's Superman number one, Joshua Williamson, you sneaky devil. Excellent plot twist. Finally, We see General Chacal on Earth leading the Sarnians in the invasion of Metropolis. And the very last page, we have this. The House of Brainiac. Is this the life he wanted to create so he would not be alone anymore? Or are these just variants from the multiverse? Please let me know what you think in the comment section. That's going to be it for today. Thank you for watching. Have a blessed day. And remember to read more comics.